Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our second example of how to solve a three-fourths body problem. So we have a vertical beam or a post on which a horizontal beam is attached. It's kept in place by this cable right here. And then we have a system, it's like a crane, where we can have a crate with a weight of 2,000 newtons that's attached with a cable to a set of rollers that can roll back and forth on the beam right here. When the crate is at a distance of 1.5 meters away from the support here where the beam is resting on the post, what will be the tension in the cable and what will be the action at point A? Now, of course, the first thing we want to do is find the direction of the action at point A and then we can solve for the magnitude of the tension and the magnitude of the action. Well, to find the direction of the action at point A, we need to find out where the the line of action of the tension crosses the line of action of the weight of the crate. So if I draw this, this line of action of the weight of the crate upward until I meet the line of action of the tension, I know that if the action at A is... The, then I know that the direction of the action at A must be directed towards where those two meet. So then I can draw a line from there to where action A will be acting and then I can say that the force at A must be acting in this direction so that would be F at A. So now I have the direction of the three forces I have the direction of the force at A, I have the direction of the tension, I have the direction of the weight the 2000 newtons. Of course only graphically I don't actually know the actual angles yet I can, however, at least graphically draw the triangle of those three forces. So let's go ahead and do that. I have the 2,000 Newton weight in this direction. So this is the 2,000 Newtons. Oop, 2,000, not 200. 2,000 Newtons. And then I have the tension in this direction. Okay, let me get rid of the 2,000 Newtons. Let me redraw this because I think I need to put the 2,000 Newtons a little further out. All right, so let me draw the 2,000 Newtons this way. So there's the 2,000 Newtons. Then I have the tension, which will be in this direction. So there's the tension. And then I have to have the force at A. And let me draw the direction here, the force at A. Looks like it's in this direction. And of course, this needs to be a complete triangle. So let me complete the triangle this way. All right, so there's a triangle. There's one angle that I know. I know that this is a 55 degree angle, so I can place this to be a 55 degree angle, which means I need to find the second angle. And of course, the all three will add up to 180 degrees. So it'll be easier then to find the third angle. So how do I find that second angle? How do I find that angle? All right, let's see here. What I can probably do is find this angle right here. Let's call it angle theta. That would be this angle right here, angle theta. How do I find that angle? Well, I need to know some additional dimensions. I'm going to start out by using this triangle right here. Okay. I know that this distance here is 1.5 meters. I know that if this is a 55 degree angle, then this must be a 35 degree angle. And that allows me to find this distance right here. Let's call that distance H. So by using that triangle, I can say that the tangent of 35 degrees, the tangent of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So in this case, that's equal to H over 1.5 meters, which means that H is equal to 1.5 meters times a tangent of 35 degrees. And with a calculator, I can figure out what that is equal to. So 35, take the tangent times 1.5, and I get 1.05, so it's 1.050 meters. That gives me the height there. Notice that from there to there is 1.5 meters, so it means that this distance right here, hmm, what shall I call that? Uh, let's just call it A. So the distance A here would be A is equal to the total distance from there to there, which is 1.5 meters, 
minus h, which is equal to 0 0.450 meters. So that gives me the distance a. Notice that the distance from where the cable is hanging here to this support is another 0.5 meters. All right, what else do I need to know? I want to find this angle right here. I know that it's connected here. Maybe I can work with this angle right here. All right, so now I have another angle right here. Let me draw that triangle here. So I have this distance here, I have this distance here, and I have this distance here, and I'm trying to find theta. I know that from there to there must be 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters. The vertical distance here would be a plus a half a meter, right? That would be this distance plus a half a meter. So this is a plus 0.5 meters, and a is equal to 0.450 meters, so this is equal to 0 0.950 meters. All right, so I know 1.5 meters, I know 0 0.950 meters, so now I can find theta, which is the, the, I can find theta, because that's equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so in this case, that's equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which would be 1.5 meters, divided by the adjacent side, which would be 0 0.95 meters. All right, so let's find that angle. So I have 1.5 divided by 0.95, take the arc tangent of that, and so I know that this is equal to 57.65 degrees. So now I know my second angle, theta here is equal to 57.65 degrees. So now this angle, this angle, I can then easily find my third angle because I know all three angles add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 55 minus 57.65 equals 67.35 degrees. 67.35 degrees. Now that I know the length of one of the vectors, 2,000 newtons, this here is, of course, F at A. This here is the tension. I can now use the law of sine to find the magnitude of the tension and the magnitude of the force at A. So I can say that the tension divided by the sine of the angle directly opposite the tension, which is the sine of 57.65 degrees, is equal to F at A divided by the sine of the angle directly across, so the sine of 55 degrees, which is equal to the 2,000 newtons divided by the sine of the angle directly across there, 67.35 degrees, which now allows me to find the tension and the force at A. So the tension is equal to 2,000 newtons times the sine of 57.65 degrees divided by the sine of 67.35 degrees. All right, so we have 57.65, take the sine of that, and divide that by 67.35, take the sine of that, equals, and then multiply that times 2,000, equals, and I get 1,830 newtons. And then secondly, we have the force at A, is equal to 2,000 newtons times the sine of 55 degrees divided by the sine of 67.35 degrees. All right, so we have 55, take the sine of that, divided by 67.35, take the sine of that, and multiply times 2,000, and I get 1,775 newtons. And that's how we do that. Again, we use the principle that when a three-force body is in equilibrium, all the lines of action of each of the forces, the weight here, the force at A, and the tension, all the lines of action meet at the same place. Secondly, I know that if I draw the vector, vectors representing the three forces, meaning the direction and the magnitudes, they should form a triangle like this. I knew one of the angles, 55 degrees, I need to find one of the other angles, which I was able to, and then of course it's easy to find the third angle, and once you have the three angles, you use a law of science like this to come up with the magnitude of the other two forces. And that's how we deal with a three-force body system.